Welcome to Episode 1 of A Council of Black Belts. I'm Shihan Scotty Phillips. I hold the current ranking of 7th Dawn in the style of Aitaru Jiu-Jitsu, and I'll be the moderator of our first episode, The Warrior Spirit. Typically, I would be joined today by additional black belts. However, with the pandemic, our first episode, I will be alone. Before we begin, what is a Council of Black Belts? It is simply what the name implies a group of black belts from various martial arts styles coming together to openly discuss various topics in and around the martial arts. In addition, it is an open and honest discussion, not only in martial arts studies and or instruction, but how to incorporate the martial arts into one's daily life. Our topic of discussion today is the warrior spirit. A warrior lives by a code, and the code I follow as a warrior is the seven virtues of the Bushido. They're listed below. Integrity, respect, courage, honor, compassion, honesty, loyalty. One of my favorite quotes about the warrior spirit comes from Forrest E. Morgan, author of Living the Martial Way. He writes, but true mastery in the martial way evolves more than mere physical prowess and expertise. The master warrior is a man of character, a man of wisdom and insight. These goals are far more elusive than those regarding technical expertise. Elusive they may be, but you can begin the long road towards character development by learning to recognize and pursue eternal versus external objectives. One may ask, what is Bushido? Bushido, also known as the way of the warrior, is a philosophical system of the samurai warrior, a ruling class of warriors in feudal Japan. Bushido was said to rule both the samurai's martial training as well as their day-to-day non-violent conduct. While never canonized, like the Bible, Bushido was widely respected during the Edo period in Japan from 1603 to 1868. Many parts of the Bushido were actual laws. While today's topic could focus on a myriad of the aspects of the warrior spirit, to include but certainly not be limited to an in-depth discussion on each of the seven virtues of Bushido, our focus today will be on the development of why the warrior spirit, or more directly, why I personally choose to train as a warrior. About 10 years after starting my martial arts journey, a non-martial art friend gave me the book Living the Martial Way by Forrest E. Morgan. To paraphrase Mr. Morgan, he asks a question in the book, what type of martial artist are you? He goes on to describe various types of martial artists, not styles, asking the question, what type of martial artist are you? An exhibitionist, just training for demonstrations, tournament fighting, trophies, and or recognition. A hobbyist, just training for physical endurance and or improvement. Or are you a warrior, training as if your life or that of another depends upon your skills? At that moment, I realized I was a warrior. Training as a warrior is the main focus of my training, as well as what I prefer to call sharing of knowledge as opposed to instructing or teaching. My overall theme to training is this, train as if your life depends upon it and pray that it never does. Another of my favorite quotes that I feel represents my personal philosophy comes from Nicola Machiavelli's book, The Prince. He writes, if an injury has to be done to a man, it should be so severe that his vengeance need not be feared. Just two years after beginning my martial arts journey, I also embarked on my now 36 plus years in law enforcement. Looking back with my law enforcement background and 30 plus years of living with my father, a full bird army colonel, it's not hard to see why I chose to be a warrior. Like the young samurai who were required to carry a wooden sword or boken before beginning to train with a real sword or katana, my father required me that each and every toy firearm I had must be treated as if it were real and were loaded. In addition, he stressed, you never draw your weapon unless you are justified in using deadly force, and you will use deadly force. Never pull that weapon unless you are shooting to kill. And if someone pulls a weapon on you, son, make sure if they do not use it, you get that weapon and you use it. These words echo to this day, and my father's been gone 27 plus years. My father's words are very similar to a saying I read somewhere, once drawn, a sword cannot be sheathed until it draws blood. 
Also, while training in law enforcement, we were instructed that in every confrontation you face, there is always a minimum of one firearm involved, the one that rests upon your hip. In today's climate of concealed carry, this holds true of everyone, not just law enforcement. Again, to paraphrase Forrest E. Morgan in his book, Living the Martial Way, Morgan talks about what I call the two-third rule of death. Morgan writes about the importance of training as a warrior. He discusses that in every confrontation, there is a two out of three chance you die. Again, to paraphrase, Morgan writes, if you are not as skilled as your opponent, then you die an unhonorable death. The unhonorable death means your opponent was more skilled and you lost the battle. Next, Morgan writes that if you are equally skilled with your opponent, you are both killed in the battle and thus die an honorable death. Last, if you are more skilled than your opponent, then you win the battle, thus killing your opponent, thus not being killed. I infer from Morgan's writing that death includes any level of the confrontation ending with no harm to include great harm up to and including death of one or all participants. While victory or winning the battle to be the death of your opponent and or opponents without any harm or minimal harm to oneself. Thus, in any and all confrontations, you have a two out of three chance of death. Reading that over a few times, a two out of three chance that every confrontation may result in death had sealed it for me. I knew from that day forward, I was a warrior and I needed to develop the warrior spirit. Typically, the floor would now open for discussion on this topic. With that concept in mind, I ask, reach out to me via email. The email address is idaru1982 at gmail.com. That's A-I-D-O-R-Y-U-1982 at gmail.com. Please share your thoughts as well as additional topics you would like to see discussed. Also, if you're interested in being a part of a Council of Black Belts, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your time. Have a blessed day.